Picture this. You're going home. Evening time. Traffic everywhere. Up ahead, not more than a mile away, an explosion happens. A chemical factory blows up. Large columns of smoke begin billowing up into the sky. The wind starts blowing it in your direction. People start to panic, run about on the streets, leaving their vehicles, blocking more traffic, trying to cover their faces with scarves, t-shirts, anything they can find. Everyone is worried. Everyone's concerned, except for you. Why? Because you have with you your Mirror Safety CM8M full face respirator. This is the Urban Sentinel, and let's get into it. Now, not too long ago, I did a video on the Mirror Safety CM6M full face respirator. You can check that out in this link up here. There is a 7M, just in case you were wondering, but I do not have one. So we're going to talk about the 8M and the value and features that it has with it. Now, much of the 8M is going to be very similar to the 6M. It's still made from the same type of butyl rubber, which basically gives it a chemical resistance for certain types of aerosols and things like that, that it's not going to deteriorate against the material. It's not going to eat through it. It's going to give you that level of safety and protection that you need. A wraparound polycarb screen, high impact resistance, so you can have clear field of view. Now this in direct comparison to the 6M, as you notice, is a much wider area to look through in comparison to this, but the field of view as far as peripheral vision, it's extremely wide. It's really, you're not hindered in any way, shape or form. You're not walking as if you have blinders on. You've got a good field of view. You've got the diaphragm for your speech. You can hear pretty clearly, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. The exhale port underneath. And if you look on the inside, you can see the general setup in here. There is also a tube filter. This small little knob turns a filter for this hose, which you would detach from the side of the mask and connect that to the water bottle that it comes with, which is standardized water bottle has a, a plunger nipple on the top that enables you to connect it. You can also get an adapter to connect it to uh, a Camelback hydration system if you want to. This way, this stays down and connected and you more or less remain hands-free without having to pull out the canteen. Some of the other similar features, mesh webbing with a six-point harness. Now, suggesting that you buy it, you fit it to your head, get it all set up. So this way, when you do have to deploy it, you don't have to do anything more than possibly a quick tightening on the straps, but you should be able to, in all circumstances, put on the mask, get it on, sealed up and ready to go. Now, with that being said, I'll give you an example and showing you in this little demonstration here, relatively easy to do. So you have it, got it all set up, there's a couple things that you want to be able to do first. One, you get ready to put it on, take a breath in, hold it. Once you have it in, you're going to want to place it from the chin up towards your face, pushing it on, making good, strong contact there. Then pull the straps. After you've done that, you're going to breathe out and then you're going to do a pressure check against the intake. Now I'm leaving off the filter that you would have fitted onto here, which this is a smoke and seal filter. It's got a 40 millimeter attachment to it, standard NATO size. So any 40 millimeter NATO type filter will fit onto these. And if you notice also, the left side is open, the right side is blocked. Primarily it's set up for if you are utilizing a shoulder weapon, you're going to be, if you're using it right-handed, up on the right side and your cheek is going to line up along that end. So if you have the filter there, it's going to kick it off to the side. You're not going to get a good side alignment. So it usually is set up where you can put the filter onto the left side. You can have filter on both if you want to, or if you're left-handed, swap it over to the other side. And I'll show you how the diaphragm here works, which normally you would not see because the filter would be on it. Now, if you look close, I'll do an inhale. 
So that diaphragm lets the air come through the filter into the mask. And then when I breathe out, under here is where all that air comes out from. So when you've got it properly fitted, you'll be sealed all the way around and underneath. Now, in direct comparison, the 8M to the 6M, honestly, for me, it's a 50-50. I like them both. They're both extremely comfortable. I've got an older gas mask that is, it's utilitarian. It will do its job to the extent that it can do its job. But in terms of actual comfort, if I have to have this on for a significant period of time, both of these masks not a problem with the adjustability of the head strap it contours and fits and when you have it on sealed and although yes i do have facial hair mine is trimmed back enough that the areas within the mask of where it's going to sit and seal i've got exposed skin there that's the key primary thing you have to remember is while you can have facial hair very small amount of stubble it's preferred that you have a cleaner open area unless you're going to have something like a, a neoprene or a rubberized headgear like you get with a diving suit put that on and then put the mask over it because it'll give the rubber something to adhere to so if it's another rubberized surface it's going to be a bit tackier and stick to it and then seal into it better now with the filters the standard filter smoke co uh tear gas, pepper spray, general noxious chemicals that you would get from, we'll just say everything from bonfires to car fires, this would be the filter that you would use. I also have a Seaburn filter, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear, still sealed up in the plastic because right now I have no reason to open it up, but it also too, safety seal caps on both sides. So in the case of deploying it, when I'm actually going to use it, I pull off this end, thread it into the mask, then take the safety plug off, pull that off. And that's going to allow the air to come in and it's going to filter it through the layers with inside it. With this filter for the Seaburn, you're talking heavy duty chemical warfare. You're talking uh, biological pathogens, radiological material, nuclear fallout, things on that level. It's not to say that the filter won't stop particles, but the size and the veracity of some of the stuff that this stops in comparison to this is a little bit different. Now, sure, in a worst case scenario, if this is all you have, much better than nothing at all. But if you have the opportunity, having at least one of these on hand, especially if there's a chance that one, you are downwind or within range of a chemical plant that could go up train derailments if you've got cargo trains going through that carry chemicals that's an issue there's always at this point in time whether we like to admit it or not there's always a possibility of some type of terrorist act with a biological radiological device or even a nuclear device going off now it's not to say on all those levels that you're going to be 100 percent protected all the way across the board but having something is still better than having nothing at all and with that that's the key thing in terms of preparation is getting these things now understanding how to use them having the mental awareness of the scenarios that could unfold and making the plans to activate them once that happens so you're not reacting to the situation in the moment you're simply activating a plan that you already have based upon the things that you know are plausible and realistically could happen depending upon where your normal environment is to the places that you go you work you live that sort of thing with the 8m by itself as i said before compared to the 6m both comfortable easy to operate all made from the same high quality material, same good confidence I have in either one of them. The 6M does afford you a much wider field of view in terms of looking down without head movement, but the significant difference between that really isn't going to be too much. The only way I could see the 6M being slightly better with that aspect is if you had to operate a laptop or something that was in a fixed position and you don't want to constantly keep doing the little bend down to see 
you'd be able to see a screen, see the keys, operate what you need to do. But as far as walking, running, driving a vehicle, you'll have normal field of view. You're not even really obstructed, even looking upwards far differently than if you had a baseball cap on. So your field of view isn't really cut off at any one point with these two masks. Mirror Safety does have several accessories on their website that can add to it. They've got a uh, special safety film that slips over the top. So in case you get some type of chemicals or something on the lens, it's actually on the film and you peel that off and now you have a clean screen to, to view through again. They have additional filters that cover other aspects of respiratory situations, boosters and pumps that you can add to it that can increase the air pressure, especially if you're in a situation where you yourself may not have the greatest lung capacity or you're not a person who's used to wearing a uh, respirator mask and maneuvering and moving, walking, that sort of thing. It can be a little difficult if you're not used to it or if you have some type of respiratory situation that makes it harder for you to catch your breath under normal conditions. But with that being said, again, mirror safety, the CM8M, take a look at it. And that's it for now. Catch you in the next one.